A very warm welcome back to Attingham Park for episode two with me, Mr. CLEP. It's not quite half past one in the afternoon, but I have been busy, got a few things done. The silage clamp has now got all the grass off of our field. However, it's not anywhere near as much as I thought it was going to be. Uh, we've got... Oh, oh there we go. I was going to say it's going to work. Um, 288,253. I thought we'd clear 300,000. It is no problem at all. It, we're not going to earn a fortune from this, but we will earn some money and we'll get some digest tape. Um, straight after the last episode, obviously, I went with a bit of a scour on the map because of a couple of things I talked about. You can buy um, manure and silage from the livestock market. Thank you for the people that commented to say that, but you can, which is great. Um, a couple of people commented about something else we're going to get onto in a little while, and thank you to those people. But what we are going to do, that's now blanketed. I need to, I've taken the liberty of already doing some soil samples, and I think I've got one left to do. I did a load on RASVET. I didn't want to bore people by me just going around the field and taking soil samples. Um, that's why I've got the little map open at the bottom. I'm just going to close that off. So it's all cut. And I need to work out what I'm going to do. Now, stupidly, I got rid of the slurry spreader, didn't I? And I said, oh, I'm probably not going to use that. But if I'm going to buy slurry or manure to do this field, I'm going to need one. But I, I might need a slightly larger one. Mm, yeah, or I might do manure. I haven't really decided on that either. But what I've also decided to do is um, the little trick I was taught when I did RASVET about taking soil samples. Now the problem I've got at the moment is I have saved this and come out. The weekend has gone by um, and now I'm back in the office, so to speak, and I don't know if this is going to work. The theory and premise, or not theory because it does work, I've done a RASVET, is do all your soil samples with one of these, then the last soil sample you want to do, you do with another one. Now that one is bought, I own that, but that one is leased at the moment. And what should happen is you only get charged for that one. So you only get charged 100. I think at the moment I, I was up to 17. I think we've done 17 soil samples across this field. So rather than paying out nearly two grand, 1,700, I should only pay 100 for the final one. If that still works. That's what we're going to find out. So if we look at our soil map, you'll see down the bottom left, oh, soil samples have been taken. I've just got a last little cluster just there i'm going to open that up though uh so lower unit takes all sample oh sorry it needs power takes all sample so that is i mean to be fair that is saying soil samples taken one so potentially because i came out of the game and came back it's now in the register that i did one anyway it's a different way of looking at it. So, send soil samples for analysis. So, I might only get charged for one then. Yeah. So, I took 17, 18 in total. If I'd have been charged for one. So, that's another way of doing it then. Maybe saving the game, coming out and coming back in, and it doesn't register. I mean, it's a bit naughty, isn't it? It's a, you shouldn't really do it. Don't do that, home kids. It's dishonest. Um, but, hold the soil sample unit, I'll take the other one off the field, right, so, that's soil sampling done, what we need to do now is check on our map, and see what our field looks like, we've got sandy loam across the entire field, so whatever we decide to fertilise it with, like I said, I wanted to do something different, because I've been using fertilizer, spreading fertiliser, like chem solid fertiliser for ages, and I wanted to do something different, but again, it's easy. It's quick and easy, isn't it? You know, it's it's quick and dirty, and we like to get it done. But I want to I want to do something different. So that's okay. We know we stand there. Actually, no, it's not all, is it? I'm just thinking we got that section there. I'm looking at that as the field boundary, but it's not the field boundary. So we got silty clay there. Sand loam is silty clay. Okay, it's interesting the way that swings. Be interesting to see more of the map uncovered by doing way more of them and seeing how it kind of plots across multiple fields. But anyway, so that's done. I'll put the least one to one side. Depends how many more fields we get. In all honesty, leasing a second one isn't that cheap. I think it was nearly 900. 
if you do it across multiple fields it works out a way better way of doing it so doing all the soil samples with one and then using the second one to just do one and you know it, they say it's a little bit dicey and you shouldn't really do it but obviously i've still saved myself money by doing it that way but i don't know like i say you may do it a different way there may be all sorts of ways of doing it or you might just be completely honest unlike me and <laughs> do it properly so next job then tree devourer i've released it you might see i was i think i was on 188 grand at the last end of the last episode so money's gone up a bit but it's also come down a little bit the reason behind that is if i go to here where are you where's my screen that i want that one uh on the right hand side missions completed it says three i, I took on three fertilizing contracts and used their equipment so i just went and bought some fertilizer leased their equipment and did the fields made just enough money to cover the costs of a couple of bits that i needed to sort out um now i could have just eaten into my money i'm gonna i've leased the tree devourer which i'm gonna go and collect again quick and dirty i just want to get these trees cleared uh get the money for some wood chips we'll get that done in this episode and then i need to buy a trailer that's the next important thing so i don't own a trailer we've got the loading wagon but i don't actually have a trailer so we'll do that and I'm going, for, I'm going for a fairly standard one. I'm not going to go like 120,000 litre, you know, anything crazy. A fairly standard. Uh, I think I'm going to go for an in-game one. I'm trying to think if I've got a modded one in mind or just probably just a standard trailer. So I'm going to head over to the store to pick up the tree devourer and a trailer. I'm going to get the quad bike off the field with the other sampling unit. And then if we get enough time, if we if we're getting the trees done is fairly quick and you know, depending on how much money we make, we may be buying the farm next door because I want that grass field too next to us. Or if we don't get enough then you know we have to wait until midnight when we get paid, then maybe we'll have enough then and but you know, so that's the next step will be getting the trees done. And then if I get a chance we'll get on to fertilizing that. I may lease a muck spreader or slurry spreader just for the time being. We'll whiz out to the livestock market, buy some slurry. That'll be a test as well. On every map, you know, when you've got sell points in place, you're never quite sure what they're going to charge. You know, often if you do that and you find it's very expensive, that's when I, I personally will then start looking through the mod hub for alternatives that may be cheaper. Sometimes just bite the bullet and say, you know what, it's part and parcel. It's, it's the map, it's the area. I'll just have to sort of grin and bear it. Other times I'll just find a location and plonk down a modded version that I know is going to be cheaper, but we'll see. Now, with regard to uh, the history of the Atchum and area and Attingham Park, obviously when I said about that in the last episode, I'm, this is the limit to how much history I'm going to be able to find and dig up and talk about. So I, I will, you know, you may only get a little bit of history on the air in the first few episodes. And after that, I, you know, I will, I will run out of information to talk about and tell you about. But it was only while I was doing a bit of research on the first one, I found more information than I, I wanted. To, I didn't want to just pack the first episode, just all information about Atcham and Atting and Park. Um, but I thought it'd be quite interesting to add a few bits in. So it will dry up at some point. It's not going to be, you know, and it's not going to be really heavy every episode. Um, today's is, is a little bit um, a little bit about the First World War and the impact and, and around whoa I didn't see him that was below the hedge line sorry right so yeah that's where I'm going to go let's go and grab a tree devourer grab a trailer get back oh yeah and there's the other thing I was going to show you later on um, I mean judging by the, I'm just trying to the thumbnail the title will be shortcuts so well, I'm talking about doing things quick and dirty. So it's kind of, uh, yeah, kind of all round shortcuts, actual shortcuts, but then also shortcuts with work, which using the tree devourer is, you know, I should really be cutting the trees down, feeding them through a wood chipper, that kind of thing. But using like a big old mulcher sort of, I, you often see them when you see the, the um, tree surgeons and the guys out and about around where I live and probably wherever you live as well and they have the big old tree mulchers that spray all the mulch and wood chips and stuff into a trailer that it's attached to. I suppose it's just that version, but without the trailer, you've just got the actual mulcher bit and the pipe, and then it's just a very mobile wood chipper, isn't it, really? I don't know if they exist in real life like that. Like the, I know the Unreal one has a capacity as well, so it can store wood chips, which obviously the standard one, real ones don't. But anyway, regardless, see you in a minute.
so what have I gone for? Well, I have bought the Stroutman Aperion 3401. Standard in-game trailer. It's a 52,000 litre. I was looking at larger ones, but all of the ones that go larger than this, that are standard, they're all just forage ones. Now, admittedly, I'm only doing wood chips at the moment. And up, and if I even if I've got the milling machine to pick up grass off the floor, because I'm doing grass for the biogas plant, a forage trailer would work. But then if I move on to getting the farm and we do crops and stuff like that, I'm going to need a trailer that takes everything. So 52,000, it's not as crazy and bonkers as some of the um, VSR modding ones that are, you know, 70,000, 120,000, those kind of things. It's a bit more standard, a bit more sedate. As you can see though, the tree devourer, the pipe doesn't fold. It's either facing forward or facing back ready to work. Now since I last used this, it has had some changes some alterations made by the company i think as far as i recall it has got a larger capacity now which said it did it was 20,000 liters that the actual front section would hold as well so potentially i've got a combination here that would do 72,000 liters and i think the problem it had with sometimes it wouldn't do stumps very well and i had to kind of back up and go to the left or the right was it left i think that's been fixed too now, I'm either going to be pleasantly surprised because I don't know off the two sections of, that I'm going to clear of trees how much I'm going to get off of these and whether it will do them all properly. I, I really don't know. So this is a bit trial and error. We could get way, way more than I anticipate. And like I said, this is quick and dirty. This is doing wood chipping the easy way. I, I've, I, over various different Let's Play plays on FS17 and FS19, I've used all different sorts when new ones have come out i've given them all a go um this is this is quick and easy that's you know i mean that really is the the benefit of it if i was doing logging because i needed the logs of course i wouldn't be wood chipping them so i wouldn't be using this and if i was just clearing stumps for all i needed was a stump grinder i wouldn't be getting this this was nearly seven grand to lease and if you watch my spectacle island let's play you'll know as long as i cover the cost of that i'm quids in i'm, I'm you know laughing all the way to the bank uh, right let's turn off those and did I have the beacons on? no I didn't <sighs> moment of truth I guess then let's see if it will even cut down all these trees I don't know let's chop it down looks like it whoa okay uh, that was 16,000 wood, ch wood chips now it appears Now, I know when I did this originally, people were saying to me, oh, you need to raise and lower it, and, and... No, see, it's still not doing it. What side was it I was having to go? Is it this side? Because it would be pretty daft now. No, I hope it was the other side. Yeah, still will go to the side. I thought that had been fixed. No, we do have a small bit there. Yeah, I'm thinking we're going to get way more than I thought. But... That's not a bad thing. That all went into the trailer. Wow, okay. Uh, just keep going then. That wasn't as much. It's going to depend on the size of the tree, the type of the tree. I don't know what values have been set. So yeah, what I'm hoping to do is if I clear this out, I might plough it and reseed it or I might just try to landscape it for grass. But it should increase... Blimey. Okay. Yeah, um, it should increase the amount of grass we can get off the field because this is... Obviously, if we go to our map, where are we? All over here. This is this section here, which means we can cut the grass now right up into this corner. So we're kind of adding this entire section, hopefully. And then behind the biogas plant, we actually own that section of trees as well. I mean, there are some along, I suppose, the river. Mm, I don't know how far on the river banks we own. And yeah, OK, so. Well, now is when we find out what the capacity of the uh, actual wood chipper is then. Because it looks like it's been massively increased. If my trailers are 52,000 litre, 
and we're sitting on 53,000 now. Why is it not putting any more into the trailer though? What have they increased the capacity to? That's insane. It was 20,000, which means we would be at 72. And that looks like there's, we're only at 68% full. I'm baffled. Okay, but let's just take it on the chin. It makes it even more usable. That's, that's craziness. Man, okay. And like I say, I'm, I'm getting way, I really did not anticipate this much with regard to wood chips. Um, because wood chip price, it's, I mean, it's not crazy. Like when I did seasons on six ashes, um, and I think when it was paying out really well at certain times of the year, it was over 2,000. It's not that, but it's certainly a lot higher than wood chips normally are. Actually, while we're, while we're here, let's have a quick check. I'm sure it's over a grand. Uh, so, at the livestock barn, now where are we? No, at the lower cross sawmill. 1015 at Mr. Split's firewood 1069 for a thousand litres. So I'm already sitting at over 84 grand just for what I've got on this load, and I've got loads more trees to clear. I think we're going to be able to buy the farm. But we are going to need to deliver some first, which is where the next little bit comes in. Now, this is dodgy because I'm pretty sure. Actually, I'm going to try some of the small trees. So, I'm sure when I was on um, Spectacle, those bent trees were like 20,000 litres each or something ridiculous. Again, I don't know if that's kind of a set amount or whether map makers set those. I really don't know how that works. Whoa. Okay, that's crazy. So that means they've increased the capacity. Now this is where things do get a little bit bonkers then. Um, because it looks like they've changed the capacity of the actual wood chipper at the front from 20,000 to 50,000 then. Because if we're carrying 102,000 litres now, the trailer in the back's a 52, so it's got to be 50,000. That is a bit... That's bonkers. That is zany. But also really cool. I'll take that. So, this is where the next bit comes in. When I said about shortcuts, like using this, the Unreal Tree Devourer, um, and doing the thing with the... What do you call it? Soil Sampler. Um, there is an actual shortcut. And again, thank you to the people that commented to say about the shortcut. When I did the map tour, I kind of went along certain bits of the river and I was thinking, oh, it'd be so much easier if there was a shortcut, if there was a crossing point somewhere. And I did say in the last episode about maybe finding somewhere to put a bridge in. And I might still do more towards the eastern side of the map. But if we go out to the western side, it's going to mean, I think, driving along the edge of a field. Hopefully there's not a fence in the way. When we get alongside field 41 and field... 13 there is a crossing point and on the other side there are tracks that lead all over the place so hopefully if I can find it where was it let's open the map back up it's over here somewhere oh there we go I can see the track the other side hopefully it's not too deep so we can take a shortcut and if <laughs> if I've read the map right this should take us to Mr Split's firewood should and i hope this isn't too deep so here we go here's our shortcut between field 13 and field 41 whoa we've got a bit of a, a bit airborne there that's not great and i've got to make sure now where do i need to go from here i think it's north here then there's a junction This was all just from a quick scan of the map. I'm hoping I'm going the right way. Yeah, we'll get this to Mr. Splits. Get paid for this. I've more than covered the, the cost of leasing the uh, Devourer. So we're coming up the side of field 13 and 14. And it's as it stands. Then I think here we take a right. Yeah, look, tracks go off all over the place. Nice little shortcut. And that's the thing, when you do a map tour, 
I go around all the cell points and things like that. And I always say when I do a map tour, there's loads more to the map, loads more to see. Because this is in the middle of fields and there's not actually a cell point here, I didn't venture off this far. I didn't kind of come and look in the middle of the map. And I suppose it's something a few people suggested a while back. And someone even suggested me doing a map tour. You know when you do the landscaping mods and if you're going to place something like a jet wash, um, why not do a map tour where you kind of fly over the map using the landscaping tool? Personally, I, I know I've said this before, I prefer to be kind of on the ground as it would be if you were on the map and playing it. I, I like that as an option to look around the map. Um, but as far as scouring a map goes, it's something I've never got into the habit of doing now. If I go up that track there, there's a fence in the way, I think. There's not a fence here, but I'm pretty sure there's a gate round to the left. There's the gate there. And I think the track then leads up here should take us right to Mr. Splits, or at least the main road next to it. Please open. <laughs> this is all just trial and error at the moment. Fingers crossed it works. And then we'll get the rest of the wood chips done. I mean, I really, well, I thought I might get, you know, 100, 150, 100,000. See, little things like this. These lovely details. That little stepping stones across the river. Love that. I have to do some more Land Rover trialing. Find a spot and do some. I enjoyed that in Six Ashes, that was good fun. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how much we make then, because if we make enough, I might even consider getting the tractor I want to get. We'll see. I think, potentially, from what we've cut down already and what we've got left to cut down, we might actually do it. So Mr. Splits is just here. This should bring us out at the road and hopefully this gate opens and we should be able to get into Mr. Splits and sell this. Yep. Awesome. Love that shortcut. So what we'll do is I'll do some more and then we'll, I'll do the little, I'll do today's history segment. Um, oh, that's going to be interesting. I think what I'll do is I'll back into it. Hang on, whoa, slow down, slow down, slow down. Easy, Tiger. I'm going to get onto the hedge. Not quite. Let's go. Please open. There we go. So, where did I actually go then on the map? Let's have a look. We went from there, around there, kind of cut across the field there. And what was it, about here? Somewhere around there, wasn't it? We crossed over. Up to there, then up the side of that field, across that one there. Then rather than taking the left track, we went through that gap there, gate just in that corner, and then followed the track up there, which brought us to the main road. Now, yeah, because I'm pretty sure if you go on that track there, there's a fence, and you end up having to go all the way along the side of the field and coming out here, I think. Pretty sure it was. Uh, right, getting back in the track, I mean, I've done the gate. So, let's see... Always the same. Every time you go to do something, everyone and his uncle turns up. That's my dad always used to say whenever we went anywhere. Anywhere in the car. My dad hated traffic. And he'd go, Oh, it's like Piccadilly Circus. Everywhere. He was always he was always convinced the traffic was out just to annoy him. What what just happened there? Something something weird just happened. We transferred some wood chip for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Let's switch to the trailer. Come on. Right then. Let's do this. Happy days are here again. Blimey. Hundred and nine thousand and eighty nine. We'll take that. I think another load and we'll have enough to buy the farm, won't we? How much was the farm? I think it was only two hundred and something, wasn't it? Uh where are we? Brompton Farm. How much was that? No, not the fuel tank, the farm. Two hundred and thirteen. Boom, get in. I, mean, I could buy it now. No, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. 
we'll see how, many, how much we get wood chip wise down there. actually that's a point getting out of here turning back around and going back down there is going to be a it's going to be a tight turn out here isn't it I might manage it somehow I don't think so might be bumping up the kerb can I look around I'm not am I no it's Austin Powers all over again no I shouldn't have turned. No, don't walk. Don't make me get out. Do not make me get out. I'm embarrassed enough as it is, thank you. Come on. Bounce off the wall. Just a little bit, just a bit better. No! <laughs> what a... um, this will make the local newspaper. There'll be a picture of me wedged in the road. Is it? Well, that's just. I, I don't know. Did that stuff it do me? No, I will sort it. Um, I have just completed the third offload, and we have cleared the first patch, so we're doing all right way better than I thought and I have developed a loop so after my <laughs> getting stuck what I ended up doing was disconnecting the tractor and then going up the road a little bit disconnecting the devourer coming back hooking up to the trailer at a slightly different angle so I could get round and then yeah, I was fine after that but what we're doing is we're coming round the way we did last time backing in selling the wood chips then rather than trying to turn in the road head straight out this way along the main road then chuck a left into the field um, and follow the track down and it brings us back to the crossroads where we come up away from the Ford so it's actually not a bad route round of doing it as far as a shortcut goes but what it also did was highlighted something I had a message I think was that the first episode or was it when I did the map tour somebody said about had I, had I found the hidden sheep pen I was like what um, and I said earlier on about driving across the middle of the map and parts I hadn't been to and that kind of thing well I didn't even notice on the way up and you probably did you probably already commented you were probably already screaming at the TV screen um, as we come across here now when I came up from the Ford I went that way coming back we come down here this on the left hand side here I just thought was a shed I just thought it was you know, part of the scenery but there's fence all around it and as I came back down I suddenly thought hang on a minute that's got a trough so, if I come down to the side here, there's a gate at this end. And as far as I can tell, the plot of land needs to be bought, but it's only about 27 grand, something like that. We've got triggers just here. I assume one is going to be the dialogue box, one's going to be for wool. Then we've got a feed trough, and I think there's a water trough over here. Yeah. So we're currently sitting here on this little plot here and it's one of those things again like i said when i did the map tour because i went around all the cell points and this was kind of in the middle and if i click all that off i just thought this was kind of an addition on the ends of the fields i never thought to check anything like that so yeah potentially we could buy this up our little hidden sheep pen and i said you might already be fully aware of it you may be playing on here and already discovered it and already be using it. But it was um, quite the revelation for me. So I'm going to turn my attention now to the second part. Now also, when I buy uh, Brompton Farm, it's Brompton, isn't it? That's got an area of woodland as well. So this could really help us moving forward with, with the, the big plans. The Attingham Park big plans and it... Did I just hit a rock or something? I just think I just bottomed out. If I go straight across here, and while we're doing it, I just want to show you on the map again. Uh, so, right, this whole section's done. That's clear. If I buy Brompton Farm, this whole section here has got trees on it as well. So I could clear some of those, but we're now turning our attention to this section because that other section's done. I had one tree, on my second load, I went up 
Um, I'm not sure if I can if there's another tree of the same type that I can show you. I wood chipped it. One tree, one tree, 42,000 litres of wood chips. Now up till now, on Spectacle Island, like I say, those crooked looking trees were about 20,000 litres, which was crazy. But that other particular type of tree, I don't know if there's any in this section here, 42,000. I nearly had a heart attack when it went in. I think these are all pines. Oh, is it with this one here? It doesn't look as tall as the one I did before. Let me just switch around. I've opened the gate on this side of the field here as well. I know I'm driving across someone's field and I do apologise. Just as an idea. Oh, what am I doing? Well, that's the tree devourer destroyed. It's looking much clearer at that top top end. Oh, maybe it is that type. Just not as big. Yeah, one of these. It was one of these. 42,000 and yeah. Awesome. I think I'm going to lease when I I'm going to do manure I think to start off with until I've got slurry from the digestate uh, until I've got slurry until I've got digestate from the biogas plant I think I'm going to start off doing manure and I'm going to get it from the livestock market I'm, I think I'm just going to lease the standard in game another Shroutman I'm going to get the Shroutman PS is it the PS3 3401 I think I'm probably going to do that now let's see if this one is anywhere near that might have just been a fluke you know just turn it back on yeah <laughs> 42,000 litres for one tree look at that filling up so if you're on here and you're in any doubt about doing wood chipping or anything Crack on, I'm telling you. Worth its weight in gold. I can only imagine going on to Zix Ashes with the prices it had using this tree devourer and the amount of woodland I left uncut. Oh man, you would make a fortune. I do keep getting these little lumps that seem to be left. I'm sure we'll come across those. Right! I'll tell you what, we did a right out of that. I think I did six runs. Uh, I had one tree left after the sixth run, which I did with the uh, uh, the devourer but left the contents I think it's about 10,000 litres in the devourer because I'm, like I said I may well use it if I do buy Brompton Farm I might not buy Brompton I might buy another one I haven't quite decided I think I'm going to because it's right where we are I've leased the Stroutman as you can see the Stroy Blitz PS3401 and we're now going to go to the livestock market to get some manure. I don't know how much it's going to cost. So yeah, we're still on 875,000. Now that is going to disappear. It's going to disappear for a couple of reasons. One, we're going to buy a farm with some more land and I'm going to replace the lease tractor for our own tractor. Now I had up until about two, three hours ago made up my mind what tractor I was getting and I kind of alluded to it. But another one came out. Well, that's a big jump. I mean, I was talking to CLEG about this a little while ago. We were, she just came down and we were chatting. And yes, we've jumped up from a start farmer to 875,000. But we have cut down a lot of trees. We took all the stuff, we've done the hauling. That's the price that they're paying. As I've said before, for anything like that, if, if you're a farmer and say, you know, for example, whatever crop you're selling is selling for £25 a, a, a bushel or for 1,000 litres. Well, that's not too bad, 1,055. 32,000 litres, we'll see how far that goes um, and then the price suddenly hikes 
and you go to sell it and they're, they're buying it for a hundred for a thousand litres you're not going to say oh no I'm not I usually only get 25 for a thousand I'm not I, I don't want a hundred that's too much that's cheating <laughs> why would you do no of course not you're going to take the best price you possibly can so yeah the price is higher for wood chip here not as high as it was like the sun six ashes but we just got rid of quite a few I think we must have done in, well, we must have done it in excess of 600,000 litres. So, uh, yeah, I'm not knocking it, but like I say, that will vanish. When you think most farms you go to, you will start with a farm and some machinery. We started with the biogas plant, which weirdly on some maps you don't start with, but you have to buy. So we don't actually own a farm. Now, I could have, before we started and come over here, part of my contract, part of my tenant farmer, deal with um, the Attingham Parks Trust might have been, look, here's the farm you know, the trust owns it, you run it so we technically be buying it ourselves, I don't know, it's, I, I'm doing what I always do, I'm kind of justifying in my head and out loud why it's okay, you know at the end of the day <laughs> I've done the wood chip and I've made the money, regardless that's what I've got, so as you can see now coming up on the left, how much clearer and open that is that's going to require a bit of landscape, and I say I might plough it and I might seed, although we don't have a plough or a seeder, so that's going to be a little bit tricky. And the bit behind the biogas plant is done too. Now, what I need to do is open that up, and what I'm curious about is if I open this... Right, so that's what it's looking at at the moment for nitrogen. Uh, have we got it set on automatic? That's a good point as well. Manual application, deactivate automatic. Now we want it on automatic because we need to get the right application rate. I can't remember what the spread width is on this either. Whether it's 14 or 15 or 24, it's 24. Definitely 24. Now this is a difficult one, and I shall tell you for why, because usually when you're putting your nitrogen down, you would do your pH level first with lime, and then you put your seed in the ground, and when you, it starts to grow, or straight after you've seeded, then you do your nitrogen, and then the nitrogen will sit in the green. Now the problem is with grass, it's already growing. Now I have just cut it. But that nitrogen level has not, whilst this is supposed to be an automatic application rate, that has not gone the way I was hoping it was going to. That's not even close to being in the green. Uh, maybe I need to hire a worker. It yields appalling. Hmm, that's kind of worrying. Let's hop out. I need to get back into the habit of having my field info on because I don't often do that. Let's put that on. Yeah, nitrogen bad. I've just. That same. 40 of 180. I'm baffled. How are you supposed to do... I don't think I did grass when I was on Rasvet. I got into that the crop thing. The crops worked fine. I didn't have a problem with crops at all. I mean, it's on zero at the moment. I might have to do multiple applications. That's going to seem a bit odd. Or do I just... I wonder if I just run out a worker run, will it automatically adjust? Let's let the worker do a strip and see what happens. I'm just very curious. I mean, precision farming, I thought I kind of cracked it on Rasvet, but maybe not. Let's let a worker go. Nope, to exactly the same. Hmm. 
And weirdly, a line down the middle that seems to be missing. However, I am spreading everywhere, as far as I can tell. How bizarre. Okay, right. Next test, then. I don't know if this is going to work, in all honesty. But let's t take that off. Let's deactivate automatic. Change application rate. Why is it showing? Do I still have to do a chemical one then to get this to work? Is that why? No, something's not right here. Let's try that. Yeah, I've just got to over-apply it, if that's what I'm going to put on here. We're going to get through it really fast, but we are definitely in the green. Hmm. How odd. There's no point me doing the other bit, because that's not field grass, that's edge grass. I was not expecting that, I'll be honest. Because if that's the only application I was going to do... Yeah, we are going to get through loads, aren't we? Now we need to check. Go back to here for all the precision farming um, professionals out there. You're probably already shouting the screen. Uh, well, yeah, I haven't done the yields yet, have I, since last time? Oh, I don't know. Well, whatever we get is whatever we get. I mean, at the end of the day, it's grass. I know what I got this time 288,000. So next time I cut all this, if I get more than 288,000, I know it's worked. I mean, that's realistically all I can kind of say to myself on this. So, before I finish on here, I'm going to go and get another load and we'll carry on. There's the bits I haven't talked about, aren't there? And one is a massive thank you to the following people. Yep, that's going to disappear, isn't it? We are putting on so much. Uh, let's close that down. Uh, thank you to Mark, uh, David, Robert, Sergio, Andrew, Peter, John and Pete. Thank you very, very much for your support of the channel. Thank you for your generosity. It is incredibly appreciated. Honestly, can't thank you enough. Um, you are awesome people. I have been asked, am I going to be doing Patreon? I, I don't know. I still feel a bit awkward about that. Um, I might do. We'll see. Um, if people want to become Patreon members. But I don't know what I could offer in return. That's my only thing. And the second thing was the, the history. We haven't done the history part. I said I was going to talk about the First World War. Um, so, Attingham Park, the manor house, or the estate, during World War I. Obviously, you know, if you watch Downton Abbey, you'll kind of have seen it. A lot of the large country estates and, and um, these houses out in the countryside, it, during World War I, some of them converted parts over to rehabilitation centres out in the country. Some were medical facilities um, with nurses and doctors and, and staff on hand. Well... Attingham Park was no different. The owner uh, at the time, who was well, the Lord Berwick at the time, had been since 1897. He actually served during World War I uh, with the Shropshire Yeomanry in Northumberland, I think, doing training. Then in the embassy in Paris, um, he worked. And while he was away, the actual house was turned over a little bit to medical, which we'll come to in a minute. His at this point wasn't his wife, a woman called Teresa Holton, who he married after the war. In 1919, he married her. He'd met her before. Um, Teresa grew up in Venice and came to England to help uh, Belgian refugees in 1914. Um, she then served as a Red Cross nurse on the Italian front line. And then she became Lord Berwick's wife um, at the close of the war. So they met up again and 
they married after the war. Um, so yeah, they both served. She was a front line, that's incredible. Front line nurse on the Italian front. Astounding. Um, so the actual house itself, um, i just got to get to the bit because there was some information I didn't want to miss. Um, part of it was tenanted by a guy called Captain Van Bergen and Captain Van Bergen was an American man. Uh, he and his family set up a hospital at, at, at Attingham Park in October 1914 for uh, wounded soldiers. By 1918 the hospital had 60 beds and an operating theatre and then when guys had been kind of patched up operated on they then recovered and recuperated in and around the grounds of Attingham Park it's it's amazing you know I suppose you know it's not uncommon but it's the sort of thing you don't necessarily know about and I know there was a, a big thing I think was it during I don't know if it's when Downton was on there was a program when they talked about it it might have been who do you think you are that thing where they go back through family trees and they were talking about a lot of these country estates and stuff and that um one of these kind of lords of the manor during world war one they obviously a lot of them were reduced in staff because a lot of the staff servants um footmen a lot of the guys the kitchen staff were kind of called up they all went went into service and went to fight in the war so a lot of these manor houses and estates ran on skeleton crews but it made me laugh on one of them where they were talking about how they'd had to reduce the kitchen staff down to one pastry chef <laughs> it's like the regular chef one pastry chef and was it a sous chef and the the waiting staff and servant staff had been reduced down to only three or four or so. and you think it was mad when you think of the numbers of people that were there still working and that had been reduced down significantly from what had been there previously um, and what a massive inconvenience the war must have been. <laughs> it was just, it just made me smile. So yeah, Attingham Park during World War One. I. I will try and find out some more some different history, different periods. Um, on the Attingham Park website, there's a bit about World War One, and they did in June the centenary in um, 2018. They did a whole thing about um, blogs, and they had people writing in with stories of their experiences or their family's experiences during World War One with regard to Attingham Park and there's a whole load of blog stuff on there on the website about it it's a fascinating read if you get a chance to go on the website have a look because it is um it's great so I guess what I'm going to do now is um continue making an absolute hash of putting the fertilizer down the manure and I mean, as long as it's green that's all I need to worry about I suppose I am putting on, like I say, I'm over applying to get it to go into the green because I only really want to do one application. But it could be leaving that red line because I'm going at an angle as well. Because when I did the strip down that side, it didn't leave a line. But wood chipping is done. We've got a load of money. Next episode, we are buying land. We are going to get some land and I'm going to buy my new tractor. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> buy a new tractor. Maybe reinstate an old favourite, I don't know, we'll see. Um, that's kind of the idea. And we'll see how we go from there. Um, let's say the plans are still afoot for whatever it is we're going to be doing. Where did I finish off? Just over here. And we shall move forward. Obviously with buying a, a farm, we are going to have the option for doing... How did I miss starting up? We're going to have the option to do animals as well. Hopefully. And if I buy up those plots that I've got, one was the... Uh, the fishing spot, wasn't it? My oh, one's gone blank. Yeah, the fishing club. One was the fishing club. Uh, one was the plot of land up here, which we've got plans for, which will happen obviously later on. And then possibly the, the secret sheep pen. But it's going to depend. If we buy Brompton Farmhouse, I think that's got cows, hasn't it? We should get cows. Way more grass for the next cut. We do the next on the biogas plant. And a few more trees will be able to cut down. So we should be able to start looking at more equipment because, as I said, I don't have any cedars, any planters, I have no ploughs, I have no cultivators, I have no equipment other than what was available for the biogas plant. So I've got to really replace absolutely everything or buy everything new um, and sort of see where we go from there, really. I think I'll do a strip straight up. Come on, because we're going really slowly. We're using a load here. Come on. 
And with that, we have come to the end of this episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.